So today we're going to show you how to add the watercolour to your design if you haven't done this already. So you can see on the left hand side I've started some of the watercolour there. I'm going to use that example to show you how to then go on to add the colour pencil. And because I've done this a little bit earlier, although it's still slightly wet, um, I won't then need to wait for that to dry. However, let's start with applying the watercolour. So you should have some fairly similar watercolour boxes in your art pack and you should also have a brush and what I'm going to get you to do is just use these to add a basic colour to your designs okay remember you can use the lid to mix as well okay so you'll need your box open you'll need some water and a brush and you'll need some colour pencils now, what I'd like you to bear in mind when you're doing this is that the colours that you're using should come from your theme images and you should have identified these already at the beginning. What you should now be doing is using those same colours. They should already feature in your development design, so you're just using them again um, in your final design drawing. And just now we'll only look at the front view, but obviously you'll need to use the same sort of technique for um, the view from a different angle, angle, for example, the side as well. Okay, right. So first of all, if you can get a little bit of water on to your shape that you're going to be applying the watercolour to. And the reason for this really is just to make sure that the paper isn't too dry um, because it's going to really soak in the colour quite quickly if it is quite dry. So I usually start fairly softly by taking the watercolour around the outside edge and just blending it in a little bit as the colour starts to run out and then I would just do that the same all the way round okay so just sort of fading it into the middle a little bit sometimes I'll also wash my brush and just get a little bit of water there and use that to blend it into the middle so the aim is that we're trying to ensure that the outside of the shape is darker and that the inside of the shape gets a bit lighter as it goes towards the middle. Okay, so that's the sort of basics of adding adding the watercolour. So light in the middle and slightly darker around the outside. Um, and then you can see from this example here, what you then want to do is build that up a little bit further. So this time, once that's dried a little bit, if you then take a slightly darker version of your colour, now although I'm using it straight from the box here because it's quite close to the colour that I want, you might want to mix your colours in the lid. I'm not going to go around the edge too much before I then start to think, right, I need to go back with just water in my brush and blend this in because if I leave it too long, it's just going to dry like a stripe around the edge. So I don't want to leave it too long or do too much before I go back and blend that in a little bit. Now ideally between layers, this now being the second layer, I'd be trying to leave it a little bit longer but just for the purposes of the video I'm going to try and just do this a little bit more quickly. Okay so just so you can get a sense of the contrast that we're going for between the edges and the middle. Okay, so you can hopefully see the difference between the top part and the bottom part. The top part being where I've added the slightly darker colours and the bottom part being where I hadn't. Okay, and I'm now going to just remedy that situation. Try and keep to the edges as much as you can. Less important and expressive, maybe if you're doing some type of loose drawing or painting, but usually quite important in design to have nice, neat, sharp edges. And I'm going to go back later and make them even sharper with my coloured pencil when everything is dry. Okay, so same again if you want a slightly different colour on a different shape. Uh, starting with really light colours, quite a lot of water, and then just building it up in layers. Don't want to add too much to the middle though. 
um, because you do still want to keep it a little bit light and if you go over it too much with the paint you, you don't have that contrast. Okay so I'll leave that just now. Right so let's say we've left that and that has now dried. You can see the blues and the oranges in this case have come from the sea theme, the water and the sea anemones and things like that. You can see that these colours have now dried. It's quite a good colour selection I think in some ways because there's a bit of a, a contrast or a complementary colour scheme here and also the colour is really relevant to the development drawings and also to the theme images. So the colour has come right through from the beginning, from the, develop, from the theme images, into the development drawings and then down into eventually the final design drawing. Still slightly wet here. So what I'm going to do is just go round the edge with the colour pencil and just really try to sharpen and neaten that edge up. I want the edge really, really quite dark. So I'm doing two things here. I'm really making this edge neat, but I'm also making it dark at the same time by going over it. And I'm just blending very, very slightly into the middle. So you can see the difference now between this bottom part here, which is really nice and strong, and the top part here, which maybe still needs to be worked into a little bit. What I would also say is that when you're doing a design drawing, although I've kept my lines for the edges darker, if you can maybe take yours a little bit lighter than that, I just need to make them dark so that you can see them. Okay. So you can see this has really helped to build that shape up there. Similarly down the bottom here, I'm going to go around with the colour pencil and literally just give it an outline and then just really, really softly getting light as I go towards the middle. Just blend it in. It's a bit like shading, but it's just with a coloured pencil. Okay. So there we have the watercolour layers very lightly at first and then going over it again with a slightly darker layer around the edges and blending it in. Then once you've done that and you're happy with it, you're then going to go over with the coloured pencil and do two things. You're going to neaten the edges and then you're also going to blend those edges in towards the middle. A bit like blending with a, a tonal pencil and just let it fade as it goes into the middle. So it's about adding tone and it's also about neatening and sharpening. Okay. So although none of these are finished, I'm hoping you're starting to see the technique and obviously you want to take a little bit more time than I have and I'm hoping you're starting to see how the use of the watercolour is and the colour pencil is starting to add a little bit of a three-dimensional appearance or quality um, to this drawing. Generally speaking, I would use a pencil that was fairly similar in colour to the watercolour with something like the orange shape, I might even do a wee tiny bit of yellow colour pencil in the middle. Um, and But generally speaking, I would, I would keep it fairly similar to what you've already got. Okay, right, so try that, see how you get on. If you're able to, you could also put watercolour on your side view as well, so that by the end, what you should have is... Watercolour and coloured pencil front view and watercolour and coloured pencil side view or if you were doing say for example a shoe you would have a side view and a bird's eye view. Okay so that's what you're aiming for for next week and then we'll take it from there with your final three dimensional piece.